Hey guys, what's going on? It's Steve and Today we're going to talk about the three major perspectives in biohacking and why they're important. That's coming up. Hey guys, what's going on? Okay, so the three main perspectives of biohacking, or really the three main perspectives of life or humanity and how they relate to biohacking. Yes, it's another philosophy related video. Okay, so three perspectives we generally have, and there's a lot more than three uh, in the in the Ken Wilber model, you know, for our use. But I really want to keep this simple, like really do. Uh, so there's three main perspectives that we uh, use in everyday life, and these kind of describe ourselves and how we interact with the world around us, and how we interact with ourselves and each other, and objects and animals and the world and whatever. So okay, and how this relates to biohacking, that's going to come throughout the experience of watching this video. So the first major perspective can be used uh, through the pronoun I, right? The first major perspective represents the subjective realm. So as you're watching this video right now, you see my face, you see <laughs> the uh, background, the, the bookshelf behind me, right? Uh, you see my wall, you, uh, you know, you hear my voice. These are all kind of like sensations that you're experiencing that are being in, interpreted you know and then into perceptions and then and you're getting uh then you're getting an interpretation of of what those mean and like the words coming out or the sounds coming out of my my mouth and then come into words and then generate some kind of understanding within yourself so this whole process right and I actually just describe two perspectives there or actually all three but we're going to focus on the main one so you're having a subjective experience right now you generally have a subjective experience all the time unless you're unconscious, right? And this refers to a video I did recently on the three major states of consciousness and how they relate to biohacking. Uh, so might have that pop up here right now, but yeah, so unless you're unconscious, like unless you're within the dream state or the deep dreamless state, uh, and you can hold an awareness in those states, but most people don't. So unless you're unconscious, then you probably don't have a subjective experience of any kind. Or if you do, you don't really generally remember it. So your awareness is, is gone, right? So, okay, um, that's the first, that's the first. So, so this is observation, right? Um, in a platonic sense, meaning Plato, not that we're friends, even though, you know, we're, we're friends, right? We're friends. Uh, <laughs> that would be recognized as the term beauty, right? So beauty is within the eye of the beholder. What does that mean? That means that beauty is relative generally, right? You don't, uh, you know, measure something and say it's beautiful. Uh, you can, but then that beauty would be relative, and that beauty is a result of your observation of that, not necessarily the measurement. It's your observation of the measurement, right? So beauty is subjective. Um, when you experience the world, you do so through a subjective fashion. You know, you have these senses, and you, you take in sensory data from the world around you, and this is kind of you know, describing the experience that I, I just kind of outlined for you, and, and, and these sensations become perceptions as your mind interprets them, and they kind of construct your subjective view of reality, and that's what subjectivity is, right? Subjectivity includes things like emotion. Uh, so, yeah, like, that's generally how we observe and view the world. Okay, let's skip to the third perspective, okay? Uh, and it's represented by the pronoun it, right? So, uh, and, and by the way, the pronoun thing, um, that's a simplification. Um, just like there's not three perspectives that humanity takes on, there's obviously not three pronouns. <laughs> there's tons of pronouns. So um, not limiting pronouns in the same way I'm limiting perspectives. Uh, so just want to make that clear. Like there's a bunch of perspectives, there's a bunch of pronouns we can use. Moving forward, it, the objective realm... Uh, this is where science comes in. So that measurement I was talking about earlier, when we measure something, uh, we generally call it objective. It's objective data. We measured rainfall, maybe, or, you know, we measure stuff going on in our brain, right? This is where perhaps some of the smart drug use and biohacking come in, or quantified self. The quantified self movement is actually just that measurement of the self. And what is the self? Well, I did a video recently on transpersonal psychology and how that relates to biohacking, uh, which is, you know, I think part of the philosophy that's important to talk about before we really get in a rocket ship and go to the moon. Not like Dogecoin, but like you know, with this channel within the regards to biohacking and the quantified self movement. So from a platonic sense, right, uh, that would generally represent truth, right? And, 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 and that's what we, objective data is generally what we call truth. So we have a subjective observer who is, you know, 
generally a human being, but could be you know a, an instrument within the case of science. We have a subjective observer looking at or measuring an objective event, and uh, that play back and forth is how the subjective and objective realms kind of work together. Yeah. So um, when we and this is where perhaps we have the science and religion conflict thing or science and spirituality conflict thing come in. This is why we have people like Deepak Chopra and Richard Dawkins kind of butting heads so much because we have subjective experiences that, you know, people have spiritual experiences, right? I mean, that's I really can't say that I've had one, but but you know people claim to, and uh, so this, you know we have we have subjective experience of emotion, right? Uh, so like love, for example, yeah, that's a subjective experience, but we don't have an object. We can't measure spirituality or spiritual experience. We can't measure love. We can correlate some stuff back and forth. We can say, um, you know, when people have a spiritual experience, they tend to be in this state of consciousness harping on the states of consciousness video I did recently, um, and, and that which can be measured through maybe a physiological change. Um, you know, this whole love thing recently, uh, you know, the, there, recently, I mean, within the past few years, just this, you know, study with oxytocin and love, which um, the, you know, the study kind of asserted that there was a causal, you know, effect going on there. If you give someone a lot of oxytocin, they'll fall in love with you, which, which I don't personally buy, but, uh, <laughs> well, you know, what is oxytocin, right? Um, and, and, and this is kind of where the Deepak Chopra, Richard, Doc, Richard Dawkins thing comes in, uh, you know, because I heard an interview with them, or with, with Deepak Chopra particularly, but like, yeah, what is oxytocin? And, and, and Deepak Chopra would say, um, and I tend to somewhat agree with this, but that uh, oxytocin is a word that is man-made, that's given to a measurement of something, it's a measurement of a change at a specific time, correlated to a certain event and so that's a there's a lot of factors going on there right but suddenly we just kind of like throw this label on it oxytocin and now we talk about it as if we know what it is when we really don't know what that is at all or how it works it's kind of it's kind of the same way uh we talk about neurotransmitters right and this depends on someone's profession or their credentials but some people talk about neurotransmitters like we really know what they are and, and how they work when really we don't really directly measure them, we indirectly measure them, and we're not we're not even sure if they exist in the way we think they do. Um, this is why still like psycho um, psychiatry and psychopharmacology have so many issues in terms of you know drug use, which is the objective realm, right? The third person objective realm uh, affecting subjective experience and feelings. So the subjective realm. So like depression, for example, we have. We, we design drugs that we think maybe possibly influence the brain in, in a certain way. And we think maybe possibly that physiological state of the brain that we're not sure if the drug induces, but let's say it does. Uh, we think that maybe correlates with a subjective experience. Uh, so now we have an antidepressant drug that's made and then given to someone. And then we kind of wonder why it only has results in, you know, it's still a significant number of people, but not everyone, right? And not even in some cases a majority. Uh, but that's not true for because there's tons of different like because we're obviously talking about serotonin here, right? What is serotonin? I don't know, and neither in my in my estimation or from my conception, neither does anyone really. We're not really not really that far advanced yet in science, but we're talking about serotonin here and, and feelings and you know inducing feelings of like motivation or happiness or or an elevated mood and so um, there are lots of different types of serotonin that we think. Um, there's lots of different types of serotonin drugs. There's lots of different studies on depression that all kind of, you know, some agree with each other, some don't, some contradict each other. Some, you know, some say the placebo is just as effective as, you know, it really, we really don't know what's going on here. And that's, I guess, is my whole point in terms of how the third person perspective, the it, the science, the truth, interacts with the uh, first person perspective, the subjective realm, the realm of beauty or art, for example. So second person, right? This is the second perspective, and I'm talking about this as the third one, but I, I, I kind of wanted to, to focus on most of this video, the relationship between the first person and the third person. So let's talk about the second person perspective, and that is, you know, generally uh, described as a we or a you, or, you know, so it's a you or a you and me, so a we uh, would be like the plural of that. So yeah, I mean, this is, this is in regards platonic. This is, would be, uh, 
you know, goodness, morality, how we treat each other. If any of you are Ken Wilber fans, you notice I'm, I'm essentially, you know, uh, <laughs> using his examples of explaining things, but, uh, so I gotta give him credit somewhere in this video, but, but I, I find them pretty, pretty compelling. So yeah, this is uh, the second person perspective. Morality comes in. What does science tell us about morality? Nothing. Now, I know like people like Sam Harris would argue that there's a scientific or a biological case for morality. I'm not convinced, but if you are, make a video response to me. You could comment if you want to, but I would really like to engage in you um, with a conversation on that. Um, what does a subjective experience tell you about morality? Well, not much either, right? Because people do bad things uh, from their own volition, right? They just, they can have a thought and they do stuff. And then we, we see them do stuff in the objective realm after their subjective, you know, conspiring or whatever and then uh and then, then we have a we experience of like oh that was really bad right and this and how we treat each other comes from this second person perspective this is how the eyes come together and and, and communicate um how we treat perhaps you know animals might fall in that as well um because they are you know seem to be you know aware beings yeah um and so that's yeah the second person perspective you know there's some there's, whenever you talk about the morality of cognitive enhancement or, or biohacking or quantified selfies, this is the perspective that comes into play here, right? This is the goodness of it, right? The morality of it. Um, and that's not just with how we treat, uh, you know, other people, but how we treat perhaps our environment or ourselves in the larger sense, you know, ourselves outside of the I and the it. Uh, watch my video on transpersonal psychology if you want a greater explanation of that. So yeah, these are the three main perspectives of how that all works. And, and so biohacking, yeah, so biohacking, first person, the subjective experience of what you're trying to go for. Uh, biohacking, third person, this would be the tool you use, whether it's a smart drug or maybe this is the quantified self realm when you're using like a, some kind of tracker, right? A good example of this actually is the Misfit Shine, which I no longer have because I lost it in a tunnel in San Francisco. Longer story, which I'm not gonna get into here. Uh, so yeah, the Misfit Shine, it, it, it measures, um, movement if you have it on your arm uh, so it measures like movement while you're sleeping so a lot of us twitch in our sleep like this yeah and there's some general loose correlation you know that uh, how much you twitch over a certain period of time correlates to whether or not you're in deep sleep or not a really good way to track your sleep would be to measure the brain waves uh, but the mist of shine doesn't do that so so there's an example of you know how perhaps some of the measurement stuff is not really telling us as much about the states of consciousness that as we want them to um you know what if what if someone ha holds awareness within the dream state you know something like lucid dreaming well that tool is not going to tell us that so that's how the first person the second uh, third person right the shine the subjective experience and then the second person the morality of it all guys that's it that is the three main perspectives of humanity i uh, hope you like this video uh -huh, i know it's kind of long philosophy isn't interesting to everybody but i'm having at least you know five or six or seven or eight or nine <laughs> of these philosophy videos out of the dozens of biohacking and quantified self videos that are already up or that are going to be up in the future. So uh, that's it, guys. Subscribe to the channel if you want some more biohacking stuff, quantified self stuff, philosophy stuff, and take care.